Hello everybody and welcome back to Mining Modern. I'm Corbin Hostler and this is Eldrazi with Forsaken Monument in Modern. Now, this particular list comes to us from a uh, longtime Mining Modern viewer and super fan as they describe themselves, Travis Gibson. Uh, you might know Travis, he's been around the tournament circus, circuit a lot, doing a lot of the, uh, the coverage of production side of things uh, on some of the Open Series events. So he is an Eldrazi aficionado and he sent this list with Forsaken Monument. Says, I have to give it a shot. So that's what we're going to do here on Mining Modern this week. We're going to see what colorless serum powder Eldrazi. Now, if you uh, are not familiar with this deck in Modern, it is really something. It's got the Eldrazi you're, you're sort of used to seeing, right? Your Reality Smasher, 5-5. Five, five. For 5, that, well, smashes. Thought Not Seer, disrupt your opponent. Eldrazi Mimic, you power it out pretty early and then you can uh, turn it into a copy of your big stuff uh now we start talking about the uh, the cooler stuff here matter reshaper you know but eternal scourge it's exiled so i guess it has no picture here on magic online but you can cast it from exile and uh when it becomes target of a spell or building opponent controls you exile it so here's the cool part our deck plays serum powder what that means is anytime you can mulligan you have serum power in your opening hand you can instead Exile all those cards, then draw that many. What that means is you get a free mulligan if Serum Powder is in your opening hand. And you're just looking to put together hands that contain things like, where is it over here? Gemstone Caverns, which if you're on the draw, you can uh, put into play anyways and basically steal the play from your opponent, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, and then you want fast hands, right? You want hands that have Eldrazi Temples that can add two mana. You want Eldrazi Mimic on turn one and Thought Not Seer on turn two with the help of the Seeming Spirit Guides ramping things out right that's the deck and that's what serum powder allows you to do is to go dig for those crazy opening hands and eternal scourge in addition to being an eldrazi that hey it's a three three for three it gives you value later on if you do go for a serum powder hand and you have an Eldra an internal scourge exiled to that well now all of a sudden you have access to this card anyways it's an eight card hand it's a it's a companion at that point uh well we've also got chalice of the void as it turns out because we're playing Eldrazi, and because we get to lean on Gemstone Caverns, Eldrazi Temple, and the discount on our Eldrazi, we get a free roll, Chalice of the Void for one here. And then the Zendikar Rising replace uh, addition to the deck, Forsaken Monument. Five mana, hard to cast, granted, but worth it. Colorless creatures get plus two, plus two. Whenever you tap a permanent for colorless, add an additional color. So whenever you cast a colorless spell, you gain two life. So this deck has... A lot of pretty thing, neat things going for it. Uh, but one thing I realize it doesn't have now that I think about is an Inbringer. I love Inbringer. I can't play an Eldrazi deck without an Inbringer. That's just the way it's going to be. So we'll put this thing... Uh, we'll put it over here. Put a Chalice in the sideboard. Why not, right? Uh, and we will remove... Making it up as we go along here. We'll take out a Damping Spear. We'll give this a shot. I love Inbringer. It done taps... Every turn, it pings, stuff can't block, you draw cards. Probably too slow for modern these days, but it is a favorite of mine. Well, let's do it. Uh, by the way, you only ever need one chalice on one, right? That's the idea. That's what we're going to do. We're just going to have it. Why play four when you can just always draw one of the three you have? That's what we're going to do today. Everybody, this is Colorless Forsaken Monument Eldrazi in modern. I'm Corbin Hosler. Thank you so much for watching. Let's get to the games. Well, everybody, here you go. It is Serum Powder Eldrazi in Modern, and I can make a free mulligan with this hand, but why in the world would I? It's double Eldrazi Temple, double Thought Not Seer. Let's go. And, oh, by the way, oh my gosh. It just gets better and better. Folks, look at that. That is a Chalice of the Void on one, on turn one. Turning off some part of our opponent's deck, and it's going to be running Thought Not Seers after that, provided that we uh, are able to resolve them. But are you kidding me? This is the dream. This is what you... I mean, look, you play these broken cards. I say broken. Not, I mean, this is what modern is. I mean, this is broken in that sense. But you play... This is a ridiculous start. You play these cards so you can do this. And our opponent has to deprive there. Good for them, but... I mean, we play Simeon Spirit Guide because Cheating Man is broken in Magic, just in his historically, right? And, oh, Eldrazi Temple, what's it do? It cheats mana. Serum Visions into 
Chalice of the Void? That doesn't work either. Cheating of a different kind. <laughs> I'm just kidding. All right, so uh, if first you don't succeed, I'm going to try again. Let's thought not here, number two. All right, well, I see four lands and a Kefnet. Uh, I guess I'll take the Kefnet. What do you say? This is why you play this deck, folks. Look at what we just did. Just complete domination through a counterspell heavy hand from our opponent, right? Like, just how powerful was this start with the Chalice of the Void as well? It's just, just everything you could want right now. Now we just got to finish it off. We do that with the, an uncounterable Eternal Scourge. And you know what? I, well, pretty mana cost would be what, two? Is that how that would work? We're going to find out one way or another. I believe the CMC is two. Yeah, okay. I'm going to put two of them on one here because I could draw two drops that I want to play. And our opponent could Cryptic Command it and then open up Removal or something like that. I'm actually not entirely sure, though, with Kefnet what that means. But here's a Chalice of the Void. So, uh, can, I'm sorry, a Ratchet Bomb. So, consider the Chalice of the Voids answered. And the question is, though, is that good enough for our opponent? We're coming in for seven here. I mean, it's certainly possible that it could be. Uh, if they start having answers, if they start having Cryptic Command tap downs, they get to do stuff. And it looks like they're actually going to go aggro with the Ratchet Bomb here. Say so they don't care about one drops. They're going to use it as removal, but it is going to be slow removal at that. If they're planning on using it to snipe a Scourge, I get to fire up the Blink Moth Nexus next turn. Interesting. Okay. Well, here's the thing. We're under this stupid Mystic Sanctuary lock, but, uh, and they actually even get to protect the Cryptic Command on top of their deck. But because they did it in the main phase, I, this time at least, this is going to buy them time for the Ratchet Bomb, but it also gives us some draw steps and we get to keep interacting with their hand at least a little bit. Find out. Yeah, we could definitely lose this game, though. The Mystic Sanctuary Cryptic Command locks are no joke. Nor are whatever the heck these... What is Tauran's Invocation? Well, I don't know about that one in Modern, but I guess if you uh, are playing Mono Blue and there's a theme, I guess if we take the Ballista, that card is uh, always scary. Fire up the Nexus, I suppose. Get in for four. Um, so what, our opponent is... Uh, how does Kef Network that thing go? All right, it's this one. It's 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 a, it's a reasonable one. It's not some kind of god that goes third to the top of your library. Those are uh, or the Scarab God, where it comes right back to your hand. Just the most ridiculous of clauses on cards. But all right, it is the Tauran's Invocation. Uh, I mean, it plays around Chalice of the Void pretty well. I'll give him that. Uh, and it does block a Blink Moth Nexus for what it's worth. So let's attack. The reshaper is not a bad follow-up here at all. Well, our opponent only gets to eat one creature here, so they're either taking three or they're going to triple block the Thought Knots here. I get to take out the Muta Vault, which is going to slow them down. Uh, and we get to put them to two. I get to draw the Cryptic Command. Uh, but I also get to add to my own board here, right? I get to play this Matter Reshaper, which means that I guess it's not particularly good at against you know cryptic command in particular but uh it is good at just being a second lethal threat right now so this thing's up to three if they want to pop it to to blow on the eternal scourge i suppose they'll also hit our serum serum powders but the reshaper will give us a card so we'll see what they want to do here they can also just cryptic command us but inbringer is pretty good against cryptic command especially once they tap down here and, oh, by the way, it's going to be uncounterable. Uh, but uh, I say that. We actually get to attack. They're not going to cryptic. They're going to go for the ratchet bomb. This is a nice play on their part, to be quite honest. Uh, 
Let's see what we hit off the reshaper here. A smasher, huh? Why didn't it blow these up? Oh, because they didn't blow on Zap. I'm sorry. Late, late night. Uh, okay, well, I guess this seems pretty clear, right? We're going to play this uh, uncounterable inbringer and say, answer it. Now, of course, we know our opponent does have an answer in Cryptic Command, but if we're forcing our opponent to, to use their Cryptic Command to bounce the inbringer, that's a win for us, and that is what we're doing. They they didn't, you know, they were able to use the Ratchet Bomb that turn to not have to Cryptic our attack step. They want to use the Cryptic to to tap down draw or counter draw later on. Uh, but in this case, we force them into bounce draw, which is a lot worse because the card is still in our hand. And we get to, uh, to run it back out. Now, they're filling out their own board, but... Uh, they made one fatal flaw here. They tapped out, and uh, that means we can reality smasher them. If that's good enough. Well, I'm actually inclined, I think, to, to, to just play the Inbringer. Because the thing is, uh, this reality smasher is always going to have haste. It's always going to hit, whether I do it now or later. Um... And they actually, for what it's worth, with the Drakes, have the answer to it. So they get to start scrying now, but they're they're untapping for their turn. They have one card in their hand. And they're just, the reality is I have two cards they have to answer, and they have access to two cards. So they're going to have to draw pretty well to do it. And obviously the, the tokens can do some work work of their own, but we're not really in a different position, I guess, is, is what I would say. Although now they have resolved a Kefnet. <coughs> Uh, but with that in mind, I think the game is actually over. We're going to find out very quickly because I can go upstairs with this inbringer. Ping your face. Pass the turn in your upkeep. Ping you again. That'll do it. All right. Well, that was a close one, though. That inbringer we put in at the last second in deck building, he came in, came up clutch there, did it not? That's what I'm talking about. All right, so our opponent is playing mono blue tempo, huh? Uh, interesting. Well, I mean, <laughs> our own ratchet bombs aren't the worst. I don't know what I want here. Gosh, do I just want none of this, right? Like, what do I don't even know what to be to be concerned about from our opponent after that? Just don't want to get cryptic commanded. I want to draw off cavernous souls in my opening hand. Uh, you know, they got to have something to spy. Spyglass, Ugin, these cards have to be good, right? Because the thing is, the dismembers aren't great against Drake token, right? So they're fine, right? And the Ratchet Bombs would blow up my own Chalice of the Voids. If I try to get them for what we saw as their, their, you know, tentative win condition, I suppose if you're, you know, mono blue, you gotta, you gotta get creative. Uh, this looks like a hand though, but can I do better? So something to keep in mind here, and it is a real consideration of holding away to reality smashers, but look, this is a really slow hand, but not only is it a free mulligan with serum powder, but by, by mulliganing with serum powder, we're actually increasing our opening hand we're going to have access to this uh, Eternal Scourge. So happy to take a mulligan there. And mulligan into this. Look at this hand. We have a gemstone cavern. It's a miracle. Turn one, I could play a Thought Not Seer if I drew one. That is what this deck can do right now. We could play a turn one Thought Nuts here. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do something just as good as it turns out. Uh, and that's play this Matter Reshaper, I guess. Could be the Eternal Scourge, but hey, if our opponent's going to counter, like if our opponent's going to counter one, and next turn I'm only going to have one of those creatures in play, I'd rather have the Reshaper in play, right? So uh, if all is the same, it's, it's probably best just to play it first, but 
Now we get to swing with it. Already the uh, beatdowns begin. I get to play a Cavern of Souls, which is sure to annoy my opponent. And I get to do what I want now, which is uh, what I'd like to do is play this uh, other Eternal Scourge. See what happens. Honestly, I'm going to go for the Mimic too, because why not? Look, our opponent prob probably has a counter a mana leak or what have you that we're now going to let them use, but that's fine. That means they use their turn two not dealing with anything. We put six power into play, or have six power in play. Now, we, as it turns out, they didn't have that. We're just going to have eight to swing with. <laughs> they actually have a reshaper of their own. Well, that is pretty good in, in the matchup, I suppose. It's, it's quite grindy. Uh, unfortunately for them, we just, this was a perfect draw, just a complete and absolute nut mulligan draw from Eldrazi here. This is probably what Travis in my, had in mind when he sent us this deck, right? Turn four, swing for 16, technically not lethal. The Dalkin Shackles for our opponent goes into play. Well, that is pretty good. Uh, but probably going to be a little too slow here. We've got a lot of creatures in play. I suppose if it, if you're them, you're now into must-have cryptic commands. Must Not only must you have them, you must find a way to loop them. Otherwise, you're just going to die because this was ridiculous. What a match right there, everybody. That was an incredible display of the power of... Eldrazi and uh the monument didn't get in the action that time but it was uh it is a fun addition to this deck that was great let's see if we can pick up some more wins all right here we go we are on the play with Eldrazi and I have to say I think this one might be a mulligan it doesn't do anything fast and it only does it okay I mean it with an Eldrazi temple this hand be great without an Eldrazi temple I'm willing to be a little greedy here uh, well, I'm not sure this is much better. It does have a temple, though. We'll keep it. Uh, I guess I'll put the most expensive thing on the bottom. This hand is, is okay. I guess we're going to find out if, uh, we're going to find out the power of uh, Forsaken Monument, hopefully, in this one anyways. But look at this. We at least have the ability to run out an Eldrazi Mimic every turn. The old 2-1 for 2, it's certainly a play. But also consider this. And this is the power of this deck. We have our Eldrazi Mimic on turn one. Our opponent has a basic island. Sure, whatever. We get to play now this Gemstone Caverns and a second one here. Uh, but look at it this way. If we draw another Eldrazi Temple, that means that we have access to five Eldrazi mana on turn five. I'm sorry, on turn three. And we cast a Reality Smasher for five, turning both of the Mimics into Smashers. Killing our opponent. That's what that does. So, uh, yeah, look, it, it seems dorky. Ah, these two ones, what are we doing? Even if you play them for, you know, on turn one, that's not, that's barely, probably not even above curve these days. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, just consider that. We're just a card away from having a turn three kill lined up. Now, obviously, we didn't get there. But, look, the beatdown plan is on here. You know, people do play Goblin Guide. That is a card that people can play, so why can't we do some beatdown with Eldrazi Mimics here? Well, okay, I guess we're going to get pathed. Uh, but actually, actually, the path is perfectly fine. We do have basics to go get with this waste here. But now our opponent just did something really interesting. They turned every single draw in our deck into a good one. Now, obviously, they were worried about, as they should be, the, uh, the, the beatdown from the two ones uh, by tapping one land here. But look what they did now. If we draw a land, we get to play Forsaken Monument. We get to do it. Zendikar Rising card. And if we don't, oh, it's just, just a real reality smasher into an opponent with only red and white mana open. This game is over. I hope. I hope I'm swinging for 15 here. Which would turn off all of their fetch lands and so on. But... Hey, even if they have removal here, that's probably okay. Obviously, we're resolving a reality smasher. 
things tend to work out pretty well, and this is horrible for our opponent, frankly. Uh, but great for us. We get to go get another land with Path to Exile here. The other art. Uh, okay, so I guess we're going to find out if this works. Does it use last known information, or is my Mimic going to die? I'm going to look this up, actually. All right, let's look this up here. I want to I wanna make sure I understand this here. Oh, gosh. I'm not going to be able to find this answer fast enough, am I? Hmm. I don't like it. Uh, it does say, have it become... I'm going to trust you here, Magic Online. No whammies. All right, it works. That's pretty good. <laughs> okay, let's attack. All right, Magic Online didn't lie to me. I trusted you, Magic Online. I never doubted you. Everyone else does. MTGO, but not me. I always believed in you. And our opponent playing Nahiri here. Uh, pretty good, I think. What are they going to do here? You're going to exile an Eldrazi Mimic. Well, they're still dead to a Smasher. It's not a Smasher, however. It is a Scourge. Uh, but here's what I'm thinking. Actually, I don't know what I'm thinking. Because I could play this. But it's not lethal. I would be, uh, and, and it's not like I really need those other things. On the other hand, I could play the Eternal Scourge, still kill the Nahiri this turn, which is probably what I just need to do regardless. So that's actually what I'm gonna do. I don't wanna leave Nahiri around. I feel like we're ahead of our opponent here and, and we're not becoming less far ahead uh, because we, we choose to simply add to our board rather than play um, this big thing that doesn't that doesn't uh, that doesn't win the game. So this seems fine. We're still keeping control of the board. I guess the the plan of tapping one land for two ones is working out okay so far. Obviously, the fact we scored our free ten damage free ten damage there was was pretty was pretty huge. Now here's an, another another Nahiri from our opponent <laughs> to exile the Eldrazi mimic. Well, now things are really getting dicey. Because this would be five, but five is not six. Do I put the opponent to one, or do I take down the Nahiri? Keep it in mind that I can cast the Forsaken Monument regardless. Wow, putting them to one is so tempting. I don't know if a deck like that would even bother to run something like Lightning Helix anymore, but letting them loot with Nahiri just seems so bad, right? If their plan, <coughs> excuse me, Here's the way I'm looking at it. If their best play is to play a Nahiri to take out a 2-1 and then lose it to a creature, I probably just want to kill the Nahiri, right? Because that means their hand is not good. Uh, and it means that uh, the Nahiri isn't going to be able to dig for them. You know, if they're one life, but then find answers when I have exactly one threat, well, then it doesn't matter if they're one life. They're going to easily win the game from that point. You know, barring a, a lucky draw from us, but I can't cast that, can I? This is not a lucky gemstone cavern, so I cannot cast that. Unfortunate. Well, we can try to attack for five here. Is it a cryptic command? It's a Sphinx's Revelation for two, but I do get to attack for five and put the opponent to three. Okay. Well, I'll tell you, I feel pretty good about actually having this Scavenger Grounds up here. Uh, this prevents any Snapcaster shenanigans, which our opponent is certain to be playing. So we want to keep this open for as long as possible here. It's too bad I couldn't cast this, right? Simply actually putting the 2-2 onto the board here would have been pretty good. Now, that's to be uh, of that an opponent controls. So the Wrath of God gets us there. They've got two cards in hand. We've got two cards in hand, but now we have three and one of them is an Eldrazi Smasher. This should do it, folks. What the heck? Oh! <laughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Forget how my own sweet cards work. I was like, why do I have so much mana? Oh yeah, Forsaken Monument. It uh, adds extra mana whenever you tap a uh, land for colorless. So also we're going to gain some life here, but... Hopefully this is enough. Does our opponent have a... Oh my gosh, they do. They have a neutralize for it. 
I can't do anything about that. I guess pass the turn back. That was a great draw for us. One of the best in the deck, but our opponent has a counterspell, so we play on. Another ghost quarter. Kind of wish I had a basic mountain in the deck right now, you know what I mean? Yeah, this isn't good. If it's a Sphinx's Revelation, we're just dead. What a good game, though. Yeah, Sphinx's Rev for four. You almost never beat the second Sphinx's Revelation. Uh, that's for sure. No matter the format, almost no matter what they put X as on that Sphinx's Revelation, you tend to never beat the second Sphinx's Rev. So, unfortunate game here. I guess we'll give it one more draw. Because if we hit a Reality Smasher, it is lethal. That's seven. We hit a Thought Knots here. Uh, we get to take a look at their hand and see if we're dead. Chalice of the Void, huh? Well, I guess I can Chalice for one. I don't know if this changes anything. Nor do I know if this is going to resolve. Uh, and the reason I say I don't know if it changes anything is because our opponent gets to loot with that Nahiri. Well, you know what? I'm not even dead to an Immerkul hit, am I? Do I have enough things in play? Not yet, but close. Especially if our opponent's just lightning bolting us. Because that means they're not going to be able to cast anything else. Okay. Well, this is a bizarre game. You know, the, the Chalice of the Void here is huge. In the sense that it's Chalice of the Void on one. It's great. It's going to lock out a large portion of their deck, frankly. Some interesting art on that Mystic Gate there. Uh, but the thing is, the, this Nahiri is still going to dig them, and then we're eventually going to get Emrakul. Either they're going to have 15 mana and cast an Emrakul, which is plausible, I, I guess. Uh, or here we go, they're going to find an actual win condition like this Gideon. Although, I say that, Gideon not truly a win condition, because I can just dismember it. But, uh, so, Nahiri is going to minus. Search for a creature, put it into play, it has a haste. You return it to your hand. So, Immerkul is going to attack us. But look, I can actually sacrifice six permanents, I think, and still win this game. Especially if we were to hit a permanent, like, say, this Eldrazi Temple here. This game is not over by a long shot. We also have the Scavenger Grounds. Uh, if our opponent tries to do Graveyard Shenanigans, I was about ready to scoop this one up. But they, they are playing Lightning Helix, so that's good to know. But this game is not over. I say that. One more Lightning Bolt finishes us off, right? Actually, maybe we're just dead regardless now. Okay. Oh, I got so excited there for a minute. If I had actually hit a creature, it turns out, is what we needed there. Because I could beat the Immerkul here. I could. I could easily beat the Immerkul. I could beat the Gideon. I can't beat them both. Not with this hand. Not with these tools. Friends, because look, I could show the dismember here. I could kill the Gideon, but I have to go to 14 to do it. And then I take 15 from the Immerkul. And unfortunately, neither of these are colorless spells to gain us a crucial to life. We were still dead to a lightning bolt or, you know, a snapcaster on a helix there. But hey, for a second there, we had some hope. And this has got to be a game for, for this sort of stuff. <coughs> Excuse me. No idea what our it's gonna do spyglass seems pretty good if our opponent's trying to nahiri us this member seems medium honestly it's certainly not bad right there's nothing wrong with a dismember when they're playing things like gideon uh that we want to hit uh but at the same time yeah we can just sorcerer spyglass to gideon too right you can have a ratchet bomb doesn't seem terrible here I might just go all out on the dismembers and hope our opponent doesn't kill us with a random dismemberable creature. Also doesn't... As, as, look, it's a Forsaken Monument deck, and there's still one in there, but it, it probably doesn't seem like the matchup where we need two of them. We need threats. I would like to play first. Well, this is a hand, is it not? I'm going to mulligan this, but I will tell you it is close and the fact that it has two smashers that are just purely uncastable is why you ship it but it has some stuff going for it there i won't lie and uh this looks okay too um 
I'm going to put this... Well, I do kind of want to actually beat down my opponent here. What if I put a reshaper on bottom and then I played a turn one mimic, a turn two mimic, a turn three reshaper? I kind of like that. We are card disadvantaging ourselves here, but we saw how powerful just uh, attacking our opponent was last game. And we're behind, obviously, with the mulligan. Um, but we're going to hit for a lot of damage over the next couple turns, and at least the reshaper gives us a card back. This card's cool. I love this card. All right, let's run out the Mimic. Turn one Mimic, turn two Mimic, and if we hit a land, turn three Reshaper, that's a plan for success. Now, if we don't find a land, things are going to start to look a little worse, right? Uh, I am actually going to use this mana like this, make it uncounterable. Our opponent could have the, uh, whatever the uh, uh, ceremonious rejection is. That makes things... Uncount or I'm sorry that counters colorless spells. All right, well we hit land. We're, we're in good shape, frankly. We get an attack for six. We have a reshaper in play that gives value. Really put the screws uh, to our opponent. But if we miss, we just become very far behind. I guess that's one of the only cards that is probably somewhere in the middle. There, we're not behind uh, by casting Chalice of the Void. In fact, it's very good for us. But it's not not the game plan we had. But it's a game plan we're going to pivot to. And this seems fine for us, I guess. Uh, Blessed Alliance from our opponents making us sacrifice a creature. But at least attempting to get a Chalice of the Void out here. Opponent could have Force of Negation. But resolving this and it instantly resolves is pretty good. Now it's probably time to hit some lands, though, right? I don't know if we can miss another one. And it isn't like our deck is not full of four or five drops, right? We have cards that cost a lot more than these three drops in our hand. So not all of our deck, in fact, a large portion of it uh, is bad, is not what we want here. And uh, that's one of them. One of these lands had been a temple. Obviously a totally different ball game, even with that cleansing wildfire from our opponent. But if we're not dead yet, we're very near. Yeah, actually, we're just dead because we don't have any more basics to search for. Pretty unlucky, frankly, to have drawn one of them there. That's a ghost quarter, though, so I guess the game continues. This Eldrazi Mimic continues to do its work. Five mana from our opponent. We're going to need them to have a hand of all one drops, please. That's a Gideon. It depends, honestly. Like We're obviously miles and miles behind our opponent right now. But, it, and if they slam something like Teferi there, the game's probably just over. You know, big Teferi hero of Dominaria. But Gideon doesn't end the game. Uh, and we get another chance to draw here. Find, find these eternal scourges, I guess. But look, it's conceivable, at least. I mean, at least we, we can be hopeful that our opponent's hand is lands and one-drop spells. And this game isn't over by a long shot. And they're not even getting aggro with their Gideon. So, we'll see. Here comes something. It's a, it's a Nahiri. Uh, it has to be a tapped artifact for what it's worth. This will help them loop to, yep, move through those one cost spells. But all right, land. <laughs> okay. Ratchet Bomb, not a land. Yet yeah, Ratchet Bomb means the game. I mean, the game's still basically over, right? Nihiri is a, a crazy planeswalker. It's kind of forgotten about in modern these days, but. When this card was printed, Shadows Over Innistrad, it became the basis of one of the best decks in modern, at least for a period of time. Just Mardu Nahiri, I think it was it was referred to. Uh, it basically became Mardu Pyromancer, I would say, uh, is how I, you, you can look at it. Uh, but Nahiri doing just what it does now. It comes down, acts as removal when you need it, but it's also a win condition in a control deck that you overlap your win condition and your removal all at the low low cost of putting one emerald into your deck which oh by the way keeps you from getting milled out in weird scenarios where that could become something that's relevant uh as it stands though look we did it right we we got a matter reshaper finally that we can cast i don't think it matters though this emerald is going to come annihilate our day 
and uh, that'll be that'll be it. I think I could sacrifice exactly these six permanents, keep a ratchet bomb to try to deal with the Gideon after. But I think we just die. The Annihilator makes us sack our things. Maybe we get something off the reshaper. I guess that's the line. Our opponent just has stone nothing. Uh, we sacrifice the reshaper to the Emrakul trigger. We get a blocker for the Gideon. I still think I die here, though. I still think the Gideon gets me. Is there a world in which I end at one life here? There is, because this becomes a 4-4. Four, four. Okay, so th th <laughs> what has to happen for us to win this game is we have to hit a blocker off the reshaper. Uh, that's, that's step one. Step two is for our opponent to have five lands in their hands and seven lands in hand by the time they're done with it all. But I guess it doesn't matter because uh, that one doesn't get it done. Well, I say that. I'll put it on the battlefield. If I hit an Eldrazi Temple, I can play a blocker. This is only 19. We're not dead yet. It's not like our opponent's deck is full of lightning bolts and lightning helixes, right? But hey, I can say I took an Emerald Cool hit and survived. Uh, I don't know if we're going to be, be beating that one. It's interesting, though, the way Nahiri does work here. Uh, the card goes to your hand. So the Emrakul is going to be in their hand at the end of all this. And eventually they'll be able to discard it to hand size. Uh, which is what they're going to have to do, though. Because the Nahiri can only put it into their... Uh, get a card from their library. Not that it matters, as our opponent had an old school disenchant there for the Ratchet Bomb. So, all right. I'm about ready to scoop them up here. GG's. Well, it was a good match. We were very, very close in those. We hit a land in that third game. I think it's a uh, extraordinarily different ball game when we start to run out those reshapers. But a good match nonetheless and a fun one. Thanks for watching. All right. So we're on the draw this game. I think on the play, I probably would have kept this hand on the draw, though. I'm definitely going to take my free Serum Powder Mulligan, which also... Gives us access to that Eternal Scourge for later. And this looks like a much better hand here. Gonna keep this one. Now, look, it's slow. Uh, for, you know, passes for slow and modern these days. But it has turn three, turn four, Reality Smasher. And the potential to be better than that. The potential to be a lot better than that. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, if our opponent leads on something like a Thoughtseize here, well, I guess I'm glad we have a redundant reality smasher you know depending on their hand they could cho choose to take the simian spirit guide they they could get punished for that but uh it's reasonable based on what they're doing to conclude that uh they are faster than a uh, turn four five reality smasher but they do take the smasher so now we just want to draw some action here give us uh some creatures well you know what i do have to play the temple i think just sort of on principle Maybe. Yeah, I do. Because if I draw another temple, I, I'll hit the smash. I can play the smash here. But uh, Mutable, if you're going to draw a land, probably one of the better ones to draw. But I honestly would have preferred to just not draw a land. And as it turns out, we're getting thought seized again. So it will be no reality smashers for us anytime soon. But look at our opponent's life total, by the way. Death Shadow might be headed for a surge in popularity again with some of these lands. Our opponent, by the way, at 10... It's they just it's it's they've just destroyed our hand. It's turn two, and now they can play Giant Death Shadow. What can we do? Anything that'll match that? Well, we do have a two one. So there's that. It seems like a, a a poor matchup for us. Don't know what our opponent's doing, but uh, I do know that uh, this is a strong start from them. Double thought sees. The Mimic, though, is in play. We can turn it into a Scourge. Wow, the Lava Dart. Oh, and they sent it at our face, not at the Mimic. That is disrespectful, what that is. Well, uh, I assume that means they just wanted to get it. I don't know what that means, I'm going to be honest, actually. I don't have any clue what that means, but I can play the Eternal Scourge next turn. I can, uh, I can turn the Mimic into it. I can swing for three, and who knows? Maybe we'll activate this Bonders Enclave at some point in this game. Maybe not. Legitimately curious, though, what uh, what's going to happen now. Soul Scar Mage shows it just black red aggro, but they just, you know, the 
They just drew a slow, a slow Thoughtseize hand. That's interesting. That might change the way this game could play out. At some point, though, we're going to have to draw cards a little better than, uh, than Aldrazi Mimic, I think. I think that's just probably a thing that's true. Uh, but the good news is we can play the Eternal Scourge from Exile here. Start with our eight-card hand. Uh, in this case, I'm going to do this because I don't really want to trade my Mimic for a Soul Scar Mage. I feel very far behind, but if our opponent is at three, land, uh, at three cards in hand uh, and two lands, they don't really want to flash back the Lava Dart here. So they're going to let us turn the Mimic into a 3-3. Three, three. And I didn't want to just trade it with a Soul Scar Mage either. Let's make them burn their spells. And if we can just draw... Uh, look, they're at 10. If they don't have a Death Shadow... We have this Mutavolt here as well. If we can just put some dorky creatures into play, we're giving ourselves a chance. And these Eldrazi Mimics, of course, can become larger if we do get lucky and draw anything big. So double Thoughtseize out of our opponent was very good, but our hand is shaping up a little bit now. The, the Eternal Scourge from the Companion Zone, so to speak, truly doing work here. Just being a card that we needed to have access to, just... Even a 3-3, just an eighth card as our opponent just took used their resources to grind away ours. I have no desire to block the Soul Scar Mage here. Even if it's something like a light up the stage that follows, so be it. There it's seven. I'll tell you though, Cling to Dust will change that equation a little bit. They're going to cling their own Thoughtseize here though. Uh, to draw a card, actually. They're not even going to go for gaining life by exiling the Smasher. They're going to draw a card uh, with the Clean to Dust, just cycling it. That means they're in need of answers right now. Uh, and only getting in for two with that Soul Scar Mage. It's spending a mana to cycle. That means they don't have answers to what we have in play, and they're going to need to find them. So, Scourge of the Skyclays. Well, this is your Death Shadow type card, I guess. Zendikar Rising, let's see what we draw. Serum so Powder, not what we're looking for. If you cast this spell, it was kicked. It wasn't kicked, but maybe people lose half their life. Each player. Its power and toughness are each equal to 20 minus the highest life total among players. So I'm at 17, so it's a 3-3. Three, three. There so their life total doesn't matter. Right? This is actually much better to play against the Dust Shadow. I will take this any day, as a matter of fact. Uh, well then, let's just... It is a 3-3, three, three, though. That's annoying. Well, it's not the best situation. I guess we swing with the Eternal Scourge here. Because the thing is, if I swing for lethal by firing up that Mutavolt, I mean, they, they block the Mimic or or whatever, and then... Uh, you, then all it takes is a lightning bolt plus a, a something like this, right? They they just had lots of ways to deal with it. Uh, let's see what they do though. They're gonna lava dart us again. I see to turn this into a four four. Well, I'm figuring out how this card works and why it's played, and uh, this looks pretty good here. Grows very quickly, I imagine. If they swing with it, though, we at least get a crack back. And it, it, we, it, it, our opponent had to throw away a land to do this. And it's a threatening crack back, I think, too, because they don't know that we don't have any Eldrazi in our hand, right? I mean, they can probably figure it out, but any Eldrazi we draw off the top, even if it's something like a Thought Knot Seer, right, that uh, is otherwise just a creature that would even be smaller than, say, a Scourge of the Skyclaves if they swung with it, it would turn the Mimics into big threats, though. You know, and obviously if we draw a Smasher, uh, we're in great shape as well. So we're not out of this one yet. But we are a little bit worried about the Scourge of the Skyclaves. I will not lie. I'm sure it's going to crash in. And the thing is, I have to take it here. It doesn't have Trample. So I'll take a big hit. And if we get into chump blocking situations in the future... That just is what it is, but this is probably our last opportunity to put together a lethal swing at our opponent without having to hope for, say, a Miracle Reality Smasher. So this is it. We'll take the hit and see what we can do.
All right, Mattery Shaper. That is certainly a good chump blocker, and you know what? It's a pretty good one uh, to turn these into three twos. It makes our opponent spend another card. This is a nice draw. This was a nice one for sure. I get a fire up the Muta Vault as well. Now, if it's not lethal, I guess we do lose the game, but it looks to me like it's a lethal attack. Why well, say that? Man, Fatal Push makes it... It will be okay. We got the Reshaper to block. All will be okay, I think. Let's uh, fire up the Muta Vault. Swing for eight, but importantly, even if our opponent jump blocks a 3-2... We're swinging for five, so they have to have a removal spell right now. And even if they do, I guess at that point, if you remove a Mimic, block the Muta Vault, eat a Mimic, go to two, I have two attackers, you'd have several blockers. I mean, if they have the Fatal Push, they might have us. We're certainly going to be behind at that point, but... Uh... Here we go. Woo! Wipe the sweat off the bra on that one. No fatal push and we got there, but I'll tell you, that was close. All right, black-red stuff, huh? I think this is uh, one where we want ratchet bombs. You know what? The Chalice of the Void seems pretty good here as well. This member seemed good. Honestly, our deck seems... Pretty reasonable here. I'm gonna ride the lightning a little bit and cut a serum powder. Why? I mean, why not, right? Frankly, though, these monuments are, are not very good. Really important, I think, for us to be able to kill our opponent's big big threats. I, I do like the monuments uh, a little bit in the main deck um, because they do kind of hedge, right? You, you can get one out against an ag a mid-range deck, you gain some life, that doesn't suck. You know, it does some stuff, right? And yeah, this is a hand. I'm going to keep it. We're on the draw. Oh, our opponent's playing Luris. I don't even know if I noticed that before. Oh, uh, that's good to know. I think I'm going to keep it, though, because this would be a real mulligan, not a serum powder mulligan. And this hand seems okay. I mean, we can play a turn one matter reshaper, a turn one chalice of the void, a turn one eternal scourge. We have some options available to us. Uh... We're obviously going to need to find some lands, but the one land we do have is an Eldrazi Temple. It's literally the best one we could ask for. Let's see what happens. Mulligan from our opponent as well. All right, well, it's going to be really interesting if our opponent thought seizes us here. Because uh, what do you do? You know, you take one Chalice of the Void, well, that leaves another Chalice of the Void. You take the... Simeon Spirit Guide so that I can't play Chalice of Void on turn one. That's certainly a line you can take, but what if I just punish you by drawing a land? You know, that 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 is taking the one shot temporary mana with your Thoughtseize has a real potential to backfire, but that is what they're gonna do. So alright, if our deck serves up a land to us in the top two cards of our deck, I like our chances this game. If it doesn't, well we're gonna be in trouble, but you know what? Uh why we play okay well here goes our opponent knows what we're gonna draw oh. the reshaper well the thing is we have the dismember for removal for you know a creature from our opponent if they play one we need to care about so I, I i hesitate to say this but even if we were to miss a land drop here this game could be all right for us we are set up to grind that's for sure and i guess now we're just hoping that's the case i think it's a pretty reasonable keep though to be quite honest with you especially against a black red player because they either use the thought seize and take the saving spirit guide there and have the potential to just get utterly punished for it or they don't and then i just play probably a reshaper on turn one if they kill it i'm going to get to see the top card of my deck if not i just get to attack for three every turn it, it was just reasonably likely for us to dig out of that one way or another right and as it turns out uh, it didn't quite work out that way. But all our opponent did was pull Urus into their hand. So, you know what? We're still kicking in. We're still hanging in there. And eventually we'll find a land. You know what? I'll play an Eldrazi Mimic. Don't have to discard the hand size now. I, 
I don't know about this one. It seems very unlikely for us to win after missing this many turns in a row. Uh, but I do feel good about the keep, frankly. I don't even feel fine about it. I actually think it was a good keep. Uh, uh, but this, you know, hey, sometimes it doesn't work out. All that said, all of that said, our opponent has run Alluris out with nothing to bring back but a Mishra's Bobble. I'm just going to dismember this Luris. We're in this game. I guess seeing that, I probably should have played one of these chalices for zero, huh? Maybe I still should. I could have I could have cut him off of that with a chalice for zero, I suppose. But you know what? That's a land. So options abound. Because the thing is. Well, the thing is, I guess I can. There's nothing else I can get right now. If I wanted to be greedy, I could just play the matter reshaper and then chalice for zero. And you know what? I am nothing in life if not greedy. So let's go for it. If they say no, we have the double chalice. So I guess if I was, you know, if I'd made the real big brain play, I could have, uh, could have cut him off of a card here. Uh, but you know what? It is what it is. And I'm, I'm not going to let, uh, Making the perfect play before prevent... Not making the perfect play before prevent me from making the best play now. So we'll see what happens, I guess. We've got the Chalice. Uh, we've got lands. I mean, we're off and running now. Our opponent, though, they have a Death Shadow. Uh, and I cannot dismember that thing. So, you know... Eldrazi is a deck that can sort of punish a Death Shadow opponents... If they go dangerously low, we can just Reality Smasher them along with an Eldrazi Mimic. And Mattery Shaper is one of the best chump blockers in the business for, for Death Shadow. So I would say that the real problem might be the Lurus here. It's probably ended up eating the Dismember from us. Yeah, we just got so punished by the lands, obviously, though, right? Because we would have just... Uh, and I'm going to run this one out for one now, but... We would have had a chalice for one on, on turn one or two or three. Certainly, you know, before turn four or five or whatever it is with our opponent with this Death Shadow. But that said, resolving Chalice of the Void against a Death Shadow opponent, even now, even way later, it still turns off almost all of their deck. So I certainly wish I hadn't given them an extra card with the bobble, but now we've turned off some portion of their hand. So if we can figure out a way to navigate through the death shadow itself and our opponent doesn't even know have an ingress rampage or ingress rampage actually wouldn't even stop it for what it's worth would still allow me to get some some value here but bit devil you know if, if they don't have a non one cost answer to this chalice of the void it might just lock them out and the fact that this thing is sitting on the stack for so long right now well that suggests to me that my opponent Probably has a hand that's going to get destroyed by this. And as you can see, that's why they're going to play this mutagenic growth on the Luris as we resolve Chalice of the Void for one. All right, all right, we've done it. Our opponent is locked out. They are well and truly, I think, locked out at the moment. What they do have is one very large Death Shadow, and we don't have a lot of mana to work with. So if we can hold on long enough to go around the death shadow and keep in mind Luris has lifelink but if we can go around the death shadow we're going to be in business but that requires drawing lands frankly uh and, and doing it pretty quickly here and wow well i guess we're just going to lose to this one regardless Ozilex return at instant speed, you say. Let's see what we hit off the matter reshaper. <laughs> I'll put a Simeon Spirit Guide into play. Oh, I could put it in my hand, though. Wait a minute. I could put this in my hand and create some mana for the Dismember to kill the Luris. Doesn't seem like a path to victory, though. I think jump blocking the Death Shadow seems like a path to victory. Or maybe jumping in the way of the Luris the first time. Now, this game is still not over, I think, even after the Kozilek's return there. 
in theory, if our opponent just has a hand of zero and one drops, then we can trade the Simeon Spirit Guide with the Lurus. Take 12 from the Death Shadow. This doesn't kill us, right? Okay, they just had it all. By the way, this isn't this is just Racto Shadow. Well, uh, fair enough. They just had the team or battle rate show. Turns out we never had a chance. Uh, but that's okay. That is okay. Who in the ineffable? I would like you to exile some of that stuff. Honestly, it looks like we cyborged pretty well. Uh, I like what we got going on here. I like the cards we have. I think they're good in the matchup. We just did not quite have that last one work out the way we wanted it to. So, uh, honestly, with the Ratchet Bombs, I'm going to cut a Dismember. We need to cut something. Um, and Dismembers, as you could see in that game, they don't, you, they don't always get the Dash Shadows. In fact, they rarely do. But now we're going to go on the play. And, well, this is a similar... This is, what is this, the exact same hand? I'm going to keep it, though. It's the exact same hand with a crucial difference. A very crucial difference. We're going to play Chalice of the Void on the first turn this time. Nice thought sees. By the way, Chalice for zero. Nice Mishra's Bobble. Nice Death Shadow. Nice Opt. Nice Fatal Push. You get the idea. Chalice of the Void on zero and Chalice of the Void on one. Pretty good against a Death Shadow opponent of any variety. And, uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> we did it, everybody. We won the game on turn one. Our opponents could not play as Modern has become faster and better and more efficient and more like legacy and everyone plays not just one drops but zero drops in their decks because just cycling your mistress bobble for zero is better than playing another card chalice of the void gets pretty good and you saw it take down game three right there what an incredible match oh man i love it i love it thank you so much everybody for watching Mining Modern. I'm not going to change Travis's deck and it's an Eldrazi deck. Honestly, I don't think the Forsaken Monuments will be in the deck forever, but they were fun to play with. Uh, probably go back to something else, but uh, they do a lot. They do a lot and it is a very nice flavor fit. So, everybody, thank you so much for watching Mining Modern. As always, Corbin Hostler for cool stuff. I'll see you next week.